This week on the Push Wallows podcast, we talk about holidays, hip thrusts, and plyometrics. Three, two, one, it's Sunday night, Dan. Hey guys, welcome to the Push Pull Legs podcast with myself, Dan Meek. And me, Tom Hall. What's going on, bud? It is Sunday, mate. Oh, I'm not going to lie. It's uh, it's not a great time to do a podcast, is it? It's Sunday su- Sunday grinding, 8 o'clock yeah. in the, the evening. The things we do, the on things we do for our lovely Sunday listeners. Sunday hey? evening. Mm. We could have just given them a week off, you know, maybe an Owen holiday, could have given them a week <laughs> off, but no, we thought... We'll still give you something. And Tom's given up his NFL time as well. It's Sunday I know. NFL like, time. This is prime NFL time. I'm hoping to get done. Yeah, we sh- I should be there for the last quarter. So I'm skipping the yeah. third quarter. We Don't worry to. about it. We'll be we'll be super quick today. We'll just get some, <laughs> get some stuff out there. And I, might, then, uh, I might just put my phone next to my screen and uh, have the NFL going. No, just, just, I, I mean, to be fair, out, we could just every time, really. every time there's a play, we can just pause it for five seconds, and then <laughs> come back for three minutes, and then go uh, again. That's usually that's how it works. Sad. Like they don't really do anything. No. Well, they don't, though, do they? <laughs> they, they do. don't really, do they? They do. I'm gonna they all go life. and sit on the sideline with their options. I'm going to put the live scores on because then everybody will know what the scores are, even if they don't. They, no I'm cares. only really interested in the Colts. No. no one cares. No one cares. Who are losing right now. So. But anyway, as um, as you're listening to this, I am on a holiday. I know. I've, ri- I've I got my notes. The first thing is Dan on holiday. Yeah, I know. Crazy, right? Um, <laughs> I, I said this to someone the other day. Like, I don't. I have no idea what any mental health issues feel like. I really don't. Like, I would never claim to. But I am the closest to experiencing what I w- can only imagine burnout to feel like. Like, genuinely. Like, last month or so, I think I've just been so like demotivated. With it's more so with like the content stuff. It's not um, like client work. Sound like once you get to talking to them, they're fine. It's more the uh, on they're social the worst, media, they're the worst. yeah, they're the, yeah, they're the worst. I mean, they're the worst. <laughs> um, but it's more like, yeah, post on social media. Like you probably noticed, I haven't been as active on my stories and stuff because I've just felt a bit like I felt a bit like I've been doing it just because I feel like I should rather than because I want to. Um, and I think it's all because of, um, yeah, just complete burnout. Really, like, I've not. Um, I realise I'm not taking a holiday for I think it's about fourteen months. Fourteen months. I think it's something like I mean, four months. Um, I would, let me double I, I check. I don't want to. I don't want to lie about these things. I, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, same, but, same here. Uh, <laughs> I was waiting for you to give me absolute shit for that. Um, uh, don't be yeah. stupid. I'd never give you any shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So the last time I was on holiday, no, sorry, beg my, beg my pardon. Eleven months ago, went to Centre Parks. Eleven months ago. Eleven um, months ago. Like, and obviously I had Christmas in them, but it's just ridiculous. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. Why, why would you do that? Stupid. Um, but yeah, it's just, um, it's just gone a bit crazy. So I, yeah, I'm having a week off. Phone is off. I'm not doing anything. It's, in, um, it's interesting though, because obviously uh, as coaches, I think we're some of the worst for it, aren't we? And then to our clients, we'll quite happily say, take that time of the week off or you want to take that day out and chill out there. And then you're like, nope. You don't do it yeah. for yourselves. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was on the it's, course it's, I was yeah. on like two or three weeks ago. They're like, so when when do you guys just program nothing? Like that's, you didn't do not, absolutely nothing that week. I do that most of the time, but. but yeah, actually, that's every week for me. Yeah. <laughs> actually program it. In. Like, but I think that's also like, well, my motivation for training has not been there because I, I think it's the same thing. I think it's all, all blended in. Um, I'm pretty sure when I get back on holiday, I'll be going on a diet and training again because I feel awful from an all-inclusive holiday for a week. I mean, um, that's but then I'm off to um, Paris again straight after it. So yeah, celebrity PT in again, Tom. Celebrity PT. Which celebrity this time? Same one. Same, isn't it? same one. Same, yeah. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'm, to, um, I'm off to Paris until the 18th of October. So that's straight after my holiday. So um, which again, I think will be one of those. It's good as well. I, I think because obviously I've not had one of those trips again for it'd be a, it's been a year since I've been with him as well. So. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Really? Uh, it's a, yeah. a year. Wow. It's the anniversary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can let them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so hopefully, yeah, having so, having a bit of a break from things over there as well will be helpful. We'll see. We'll see. You might not notice any difference in me at all. I might just absolutely come back hating life again. <laughs> You'll <laughs> be fine. No, because at the end of October, then it's my birthday. So clearly, they'll be super happy about that. Well, yeah, big party then, I reckon. <laughs> well, I need to go to Bath. So 
You need to click up these fucking shoes you've got. I'm just gonna... <laughs> it's been uh, three months, maybe. Like it's been a while, mate. It's yeah. been a while. Oh, I haven't been there in a while. Need to come see. Isn't it Isabel's birthday this week as well? It's while we're away. Yeah, she had a birthday party yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, she uh, she had she's got a birthday while we're away. So she'll um she's had all her presents and everything before she goes. But it's also her first trip on an aeroplane, which is going to be I fun. Know, that's going to be super exciting. I think super exciting for you. One of the Do you think she'll? Oh, I think she'll love it. Yeah, she will. She she likes travel. She likes trains and stuff like that. And she always looks at planes in the sky and stuff. And then when I told her we were going on, she was really excited. I think she'll um she'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. I think. I hope. I pray to God. I hope. <laughs> yeah, she'll I be alright. Right. Like I was pretty late to going on a plane. Bearing my mum doesn't fly, so uh, was, we were always very European based. And then uh, at some point, we I think my dad was like, "You're getting on a plane," and went over the like Channel Islands or something like that. It was the first thing. Where, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like at like ten or eleven years old, it was. Uh, yeah, I think it's one of those. Isn't it? It's just that. It's just that first time years pop. I think for her, she'll be like, "What's that?" Maybe we should be think it's weird or whatever, but she'll be alright. But yeah, nowadays it's kind of like brilliant. I have to go on a plane. I wish I didn't have to. I know. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> I want to just go. I want to just be there. I just want to be yeah, there. I just want to be there. It's kind of all the travel crap. That's fine. Oh, shit. Um, oh, especially because I arrived slightly too late for my bag check-in for when we were flying to Scotland the other week. So it's so good. We were like. Five minutes because the plane was delayed. We thought we would be fine, and then uh, I couldn't check in my bag. Then I lost my walking poles. Not cool. Oh, your walking poles? Oh god! I'm big, glad man. I didn't actually take them because I wouldn't have needed them at all. No. <laughs> I was like, "Why am I carrying these up a mountain?" I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I remember once we got um, we had a, a, an internal domestic flight. We went to um, when we were in football. We went from Hull to Southampton for a game. And I remember. Um, on the way there, the manager turned to, turned to me and said, um, "Oh, you got your passport, yeah?" And I went, "No." And he was like, "You've not got your passport." He's like, "You can't come. You don't got your passport." And I was like, "No." I was like, well, "It's in England." He's like, "You still need your passport to go in the air because you go in the air. You leave the country." <laughs> He's like, "You leave the country," and I was just like, "Oh shit, I've never done it before." I was like, "Shit, what? What do you mean? What do you mean like this?" Anyway, I had me going for about ten minutes, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And luckily, all you needed was ID. I think it was like you just need driver. So, like. Will you look this up? Because I was. <laughs> So I was uh, traveling with a few people, and uh, some of them are, are international. And uh, I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you need your passport. They were like, why? I was like, I'm not being racist. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, um, but apparently, so I just took my driver's license. Um, I just showed that. Absolutely fine. Yeah. And um, that was just in Glasgow. But you can actually, internal flight, you can actually travel with a passport, which is up to five years out of date. Wow, I did not know that. Crazy, right? So if you have an outdated passport, you can still jump on a plane to Glasgow or Belfast. Um, pretty crazy. I don't know either, until I looked it up. Uh, just checking that international people had to have a passport or not to fly internally. Turns out they didn't. They could try do driver's license as well. Same as us, yeah. Uh, same as us. It's, it's almost like we live in a, a great country now. Almost. Yeah. Um, nice. But have you bought your advent calendar yet? No, of course not. If you're not, I mean, yeah. they're out. Well, they were yeah, out but surely, that, surely that's going to go out of date by the time you come to eat um, it. No, because I've already eaten it, mate. Um, oh, but of course <laughs> not, yeah. Funny. I can't believe it. Like, I can't believe they're actually out in my shop. Um, it is quite, ridiculous. It is, there should be a law like I until all, Halloween's done. The the lint, like, Father Christmases are there as well and all this stuff. The all. clocks haven't even gone back. <laughs> it's September. Oh. It's September. It's, it's just it's over three like months. soon. It's just going to be like June. Of the year. <laughs> it's crazy. Absolutely. Oh, it's, come on! Madness. It's like the the clocks don't change till the end of October. I know. Over my birthday. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> birthdays are done. Um, oh, that's awful, isn't it? Bad. That's actually annoyed me. Actually, knowing that. <laughs> like, well, I've seen the, the bits and bobs, like just obviously the in the shots, but I didn't know it was that bad. Yeah. I'm not too sure if it's just my my Tesco Metro. It's just Tesco Metro Express Metro. Yeah. It's like I saw. What I like. I remember last year I saw like. I didn't think nuts went that badly out of date, but apparently they do. And dried fruit as well. I didn't think it was that bad. But I remember seeing it in the shops last year, and it went out of date before Christmas. I was like, "What is going? Like, that's not normal. Like, that sort of food has a shelf life probably of yeah, like obviously a month or whatever." Yeah. And it's like, don't bring it out then until it's December. <laughs> you know, yeah, weirdos like me who buy it, who like, well, I would quite happily eat, I don't, yeah, Christmas chocolate, not so much. Easter chocolate, I would quite happily eat a lot more toward Easter. So that's all right. 
Mm. I'm not too sure whether it is okay or that's just me being fat. Um, I think it's you being fat. That's the problem. Most, most likely. Um, but very strange. Um, one thing, how is your new cough machine? It's great. Uh, it, it, and the thing as well is I'll, I'll, I know it's made a difference because I obviously had a different um, machine with the same capsules. Yeah. Um, so obviously, I so spoke to Maxwell the curtain, last night. I, was, I, spoke, the, I spoke to me, Maxwell Me and last Dan night. are officially coffee snobs. Yeah. I think, I, think that, that's, I think we've reached that level now. We are definitely at that level. So yeah, so um, <laughs> the, guy, the guy I know who owns um, Kelowna Coffee. Kelowna Coffee, right? Who, yeah, if you don't know Clona Coffee, you need to go online and search for clonacoffee.com. Um, and they do the, like, he does amazing coffee. He basically sources, sources and roasts his own coffee from all over the world. And he's a, um, he's, yeah, he's a, he's a pretty, um, he's, he's a pretty, pretty smart he's dude pretty. with coffee. Right. Pretty smart dude. He's pretty coffee. and he's smart. Yeah. Um, Whole package. And he's, and he he's likes one, I think he's, he's yeah yeah he's competing like World Barista Championship stuff like this anyway, and um, basically he brought out his own capsules and he put them in espresso machines and he thinks espresso machines are shit they're not good enough um, they ruin it they don't like bring out the best character in his coffee so he basically designed his own coffee machine um, as you do you know solve a problem and all um, and he had an amazing deal on and I told Tom straight away about it I was like Tom you need to buy this machine and he sold out within twenty four hours but luckily me and Tom got one so we did we did. Yeah, I, I was straight on it. I was, I was quite surprised at myself. I was just like, screw it, I'm just going to do it straight after you told me. <laughs> because the, well, the deal was, wasn't it? You, you subscribed yeah, to get you the capsule. for, and what is you it, like, free machine. like 12 months, right? And I was just like, I don't know what I subscribed to. It's considering, because I, I don't have one every single morning, but I'll quite happily have quite a few on the weekend. Yeah. So I think I was yeah. just like, what was it, like 40 every, t- is it two weeks? Yeah, I've got 40 every two weeks. So, yeah. so it's, only, it's only 12 deliveries, so it would only be, yeah, yeah six months. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, like I, I had it and I noticed, I really noticed a difference straight away. Like they tasted so much better. So yeah, you know, you'll notice. It, I, haven't, I haven't set mine up yet. So I, if anybody wants an espresso machine and they're in London, you can have my other. That's it. I mean, that's a great sell, Tom. <laughs> Anyone want to use an espresso machine? <laughs> that I've had for a long time, I think. That's why I was like, hey, it's probably due a change as well. Yeah, so I I can't get I can't get my head around people that have Nespresso machines and like the Nespresso pods and they're like, oh, it really tastes really good. This one, I'm like, no, it doesn't. It's like shit. I, I like the for the reason. Whenever I had the Nespresso pods, like uh, I'd only get like the chocolate or the caramel or the vanilla ones yeah. because you can yeah. you can taste a little bit of that in it. Yeah. The coffee ones are just kind of like yeah, it's coffee. Yeah, Can't just be. really dark roast coffee. Great. <laughs> yes. like, it doesn't taste any different to the other ones. Well, with these is. ones, yeah. you're like, okay, shit, you can actually tell the difference. Okay. I'll be looking forward to it. I might, I might donate my... Because uh, I know both my sisters have one, and but my parents don't. They, they have a filter machine, but it might be useful. I think they'll be scared of it if I put it in there. Yeah, because it's... Like, oh, my God. <laughs> what do I do? Um, but my dad actually might be able to work it. He doesn't know how to work the filter machine. It's the easiest thing in the world. Um, yeah, he'll be like, it. if I press this button, that works. Like, yeah, yeah, do it. But it's not. They're, they're, are they environmentally friendly or not? They're not, are they? Are they meant to be um, really bad, or had they changed? I thought there was a rumor that they changed because the capsules weren't recyclable. Yeah, then well, they're aluminium now, aren't they? Okay, so they are. Recyclable. I think the majority. Yeah, they are. Yeah. You just have to take the coffee out of them, obviously. Really? Okay. <laughs> well, no, you say that, but people throw, people recycle them the coffee in. You say that, but really. Huh. People don't get that you have to take the coffee out. They think that you just put it in, press the button, and they, all the coffee comes out. I've had this discussion with someone, so I know that's what people think. <laughs> Where do they think the coffee goes? Uh, I don't know what they think, Tom. I think <laughs> they think <laughs> that they, it's I, clearly in there. I think what they think is that it's like um, almost like like instant coffee that would dissolve in like it just dissolved, so there's it nothing just, in it. It just goes through it. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, we know that. Tom. <laughs> Okay. Uh, some people think it's like instant coffee in there, yeah, and then yeah, the water yeah. mixes with it, and it comes out, and then there's nothing left in there. Because you know how when you mix instant coffee, there's nothing left in the cup, is there? When you drink it. <laughs> oh well, yeah. <laughs> Get me. Right. Should we should we, should we talk a slight bit of fitness? Uh, just before we do that, though, huh? like yeah, we can if you want. <laughs> really? All right. <laughs> I saw an advert the other day for coffee bags. Oh no, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. Right, and I said, I said this to someone years ago. I was like, "Why don't they do coffee bags?" I was like, "I don't understand it," and I still for life me can't remember why. And I and I remember seeing the advert, and obviously they joke about how how has no one thought of this before? And they do like loads of like little skits where obviously they you know they get interrupted or they get I think one someone gets there's like a on a boat and there's a big horn under there. But um, <laughs> I was just like, there must be a reason why, and of course the reason for it is that 
the water doesn't sit in coffee like the, like good coffees when you do filters espressos yeah, yeah. it doesn't just sit in it sure. um and obviously you need the like i don't know what it is about it there's obviously a reason that proper coffee people wouldn't do it but um yeah taylor's harrogate went for it didn't they i reckon that, i reckon that'll be a big thing i'll take off be absolutely fine yeah yeah, yeah it'll take most off most of the people that are people, mainly tea drinkers will yeah like, oh, or people it. people that just drink shit coffee i think it's nice <laughs> to have one. nothing to be being posh i think <laughs> <laughs> really Oh my god! I, I feel like you. I feel like it'd be okay, but you'd have to constantly man it. You'd have to like dip it, dip and dab it like in the water until you get the desired color. I guess would be. I don't think people. I, yeah, I'm not going to do it. Mate. Like I've got three coffee machines, <laughs> so I'm going to be like, yeah. Yeah, I've okay. got every. I think I've got like every coffee machine you can get. Yeah, like, much, it's yeah. not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's, it's it's just going to be for lazy people. Lazy people who don't want good coffee. Very true. That's what it's for. Anyway, let's talk about fitness then, yeah. That's what the people are here. Really? No, I don't know. Fifteen I don't know. minutes. There's, there's there's one thing I'm more excited about than fitness is uh, the Joker comes out on Friday with Joaquin Phoenix, and it looks really good. Are you gonna go see that? The Joker? Yeah. No. Stand not. standalone. No, brilliant. Right. Yeah, they should have they should have cast. I have to bring Ledger. somebody else on this show to talk about movies. Seriously. They should have they should have cast Heath <laughs> Ledger. You did a good job last time. I don't, yeah, know why right, yeah. cast I, wonder, him. I don't think you can probably cast him this time. They should they should have recast him. I, mean, I, you I did think... do a stand up job previously. Just, Travesty that he's not been given a gig again, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no repeat gig. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely awful, mate. But, or was it Jared Leto that did the last one as well? He was fucking shit. Um, was it? I think he got slammed, didn't he, for that? I remember that. Oh, Suicide Squad. Just, that was it. Yeah. Uh, they're remaking the whole film, though, because they're just redoing the whole film. I love how they just remake films. Like, they've run out of ideas. No, they've run out, 100% run out of ideas. That's just what happens now. It's been like kids' toys. Kids TV shows, films, they just remake, they just like remake Jungle Book. Let's remake The Lion King. No, it's fine. I want real, I, I, if they remake I, I, any of these more things, like with animals, I want real lions to do the real things. I want real lions to of, sing. They kind of get like The Lion King one, because obviously it, it was, you know, technology has come on so far it? now. Did you see no, it? No, I haven't, no, no. Yeah, haven't, all right. But... Everybody who hasn't, who hasn't seen it, it was terrible. Um, Technology's come on so far that the CGI, or whatever of it all, yeah, means it is, it, really, it, like, it is a different film. Effectively, it just, it just didn't have as much feel to it. Yeah, obviously yeah. we saw it when we were children, the first one, but 100, percent the more emotion and stuff was in the cartoon compared to the one that was CGI. Yeah, it just, it wasn't just great. annoys me that all like the Batman films and stuff. It's just like every single time I'm like, so is this what's this one? And they're like, oh, this is Batman Returns. But we've already had Batman Returns. Yeah, this is a new Batman Returns. Where's, where's Batman Returns from? Yeah, exactly. Um, I was like, what, yeah. what are you on about Batman? Re- Batman, <laughs> like, Batman back from holiday. Yeah. No, this one. Well, this is Batman Christian Bale, not Batman with uh, Val Kilmer. Oh, okay, oh, so that uh, is that different? Is it? <laughs> well, I mean, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he was better, though. Christian Bale. Was he was better. better. He was better. That's yeah. true. But Very true. He also <laughs> took a lot of drugs, didn't he? What? No. Never. Never. <laughs> he was exactly like that in American Psycho. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. All right, mate. Um, you tagged me in something. A couple of things, actually. Uh, just to. I see you're doing research for the show, mate. You see? Yeah. Alright, um, first time for everything, Dan. Jeez. You know it, I'm on the ball. Almost pulled my headphones out then, uh, that you have to wear when you podcast. In the shock. I know. Um, so you tagged me, and so, cause, just because you want to troll my jump in, I'm wearing my Exos t shirt. Um, it's cool, right? It's not cool, mate, at all. It's cool. What's it say on the back? Um, kick me. <laughs> Someone's put a thing on it. No, no, no. Whoever do that, who would do that to me? What does it say on there, mate? I don't know. I was trying. I genuinely. Oh, you actually don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to go. I don't know. Train harder, probably something like that. Train harder, faster, longer, shorter. Jump, jump lots. Sprint. Really philosophical. Really good. Um, but you tagged me in a post by Brett Contreras um, I did. from the Glute Lab. But um, who? So it was. It was a uh, study. Effects of plyometric versus optimum power training on components of physical fitness in young male soccer players. International Journal of Sports Psychology and uh, Physiology and Performance. Uh, 2019, so very recent study, probably got completed end of 2018, I guess, if it's published now. Yeah. Um, so recent fascinating study showed that performing explosive squats and explosive hip thrusts both perform with loads, maximized power output, so he guesses around 60 so Brett hasn't read the paper. Um, <laughs> I guess around sixty yeah. percent of one RM. So we don't really know that because we could talk about strength speed and speed strength. So speed strength would be from fifteen percent up to like forty, forty-five percent, and then yeah. 
and then strength speed would be from about 40, 45% up to maybe 60, 65%. So I don't know what you're talking about, Brett. Um, pick one. Ba- basic power output would be one of those, um, but we're not too sure. doesn't say. Um, most people train primarily for physique improvements, but if you're interested in improving, <laughs> improving athletic performance, considering lightening the load and performing four sets of four to eight reps as explosively as possible around 60% your RM. I would say start at about 40% your RM and move up from that, in my professional opinion. Um, that's what the literature says in SNC anyway. You can curl mm. me down. Um, and four to eight reps, probably around, yeah, six, probably about right. <laughs> Soon as you lose velocity, but the interesting thing that Dan wanted to point out was was what then? That they compared it to plyometric training, and they found that it was a lot, lot better. Yeah. Than so doing actual jumping. Plyometric training was hops, skips, jumps. Um, All the they, important stuff. So they progressed from fifty-six to eighty-four. So they so the, in the hip thrusts and stuff, they were progressing in. Uh, they must have been progressing in a load, or. Yeah, they must have been. Um, maximize the power output. So 4 by 8s 4 by 6s and 4 by 4s um, And their percentage change, they go up. Um, it must be low, because that's, that's not under pressure yeah. volume. Um, but which, which, I'm going to pick holes in this study right now, Dan, um, just from flick reading. So, so for the plyometrics, they did hops, skips, and jumps. So how do you know how we uh, measure volume um, we only really measure volume in uh, plyometric training. We don't measure load because plyometrics is generally just you, yeah. body weight. Um, what do we? How do we measure it? Number of landings, contacts, or... correct. Contacts, contacts. So they manipulated volume, which is different to load. So the intensity is different. Um, so, but arguably, it's probably the only way they're going to manage. The only way they try can it. probably manage it. Yeah, but the, but then they've gone up in volume. And gone down in volume on the other one. Yeah, but the loads increased. No, so the intensity has probably had to increase. The loads increased, but the volume load isn't going to be the same. Yeah, overall load. So, and the overall load's going to be higher in terms of volume load if you think of body weight contacts. But yeah, mm-hmm. contacts from fifty-six to eighty-four, ninety-four, and one hundred and twenty-six. Just a random number. Um, I could get the literature out uh, for contacts per session, um, but I know. From basic literature, it starts from intermediate athletes, which I'm going to guess most footballers actually just kind of intermediate athletes. Um, Beginner athletes. <laughs> um, contacts per session in plyometric training starts at 44 contacts. So you've already gone quite high right, at the start one, 56. So the fatigue yeah. effects are going to happen. Um, but obviously, I, th- I think they'll be more fatigued and then they'll be quite overloaded. Um, they're probably not going to handle that volume, Daniel, I don't think, considering they haven't done it. Um, but explosive squats, so what they do, their testing parameters were counter-movement jumps, squat jumps, 10-meter sprints, 30-meter sprints, and change of direction ability. I'm not too sure how they, <laughs> what that means. Um, I'd like to see them. I should look this research up, because it would be quite interesting to see what, uh, what tests they actually did. You can do a proper, proper thorough analysis of it, Tom, can't you? Just rip it apart, mate. Um, because we can rip apart every piece of research, but it's probably pr- pretty decent. I'd be quite happy with the designing a study we got published. So, <laughs> just have to have enough backing, don't we, by the unis. That's it. That's it. Um, so, plyometric, so the changes, the squat jump was pretty much the same, 10.2 to 10.4, so it did nothing. The rest of them, so the, the biggest one was 30 meter sprint. That was big. That was like a 2.5% increase. Um, that's quite good. And the counter movement jump was a little bit bigger. I'd expect that. <laughs> um, and change direction. So there is actually, um, from testing, you can you can determine of what kind of programming you're meant to be doing um, based off your counter movement or your squat jump movements or testing scores and which one's got a bigger difference and which training you should mm. push towards. So this is actually a theory um, put forward by Altis, I believe, which is a rival of Exos, right? Um, no idea, mate. Yeah, so... So I don't know, they do lots of that kind of testing. So if your counter movement jump is uh, very similar to your squat jump, um, and there's not much of a differential, you should be doing 
plyometric training because you're trying to increase elastin because that's your issue you're not very bouncy and you can't bounce in and out so if you're counter movement so that's like the you start tall then you jump straight in and out a squat okay. jump you'll pause at the bottom for like three seconds and explode out of that one if there's a big differential and your squat jump sucks you spend more time doing strength work because you can't recruit from a concentric portion um so that's the theory um i'm guessing that will that which doesn't really ch- explain the no difference in squat jump <laughs> i guess mm. these people are, are kind of spring anyway so the plyometric changes were big for them um which was good um 10 meter sprint i'd say that's probably more running mechanics if you really wanted to change that but i would i would agree i would expect those results um mm. from just plyometric training because i don't think even with the contacts, you're essentially tendon training. I've, I've wrote in my notes, uh, heavy hip thrust, stuff better than plyos. Um, this research is missing the point. Um, I just thought it was interesting <laughs> from that, from what we talked about last week, where we talked about how you know, non-specific training being useful, just being stronger, being useful. I think it's the same thing. It carries over to that whole thing of, you know, people would say, oh, how do you get better at jumping? We'll jump. And I was like, well, not necessarily. Like, there's, you know, there's, there's obviously there's fundamentals that, you know, require you to be good at jumping, which is one of them is, is strength to a degree. So it was just that whole thing of I think it's important to, to I suppose, understand that, you know, like, like it, it's not as cut and dry as do one, do one or the other. And, and like we talked about with missing the point of it completely, like, why is there, no group that's done both. <laughs> no, why, why have there no group right. that's done both? Because I reckon, I reckon, the... I reckon, even if they, the way they've done the volume as well, even if you did a group that did half the volume that's of the weight, do half volume and half volume pliers. I'd, yeah, and I'd, I'd probably ask them. You could do it on different training days, or you could do it. Let's go. Let's be smart and do heavy stuff and then light stuff. Mm. Be right. I reckon that no, group no, would have done a bit better. I would, yeah, and we both probably would hypothesise that that would be the leading group and that would have the biggest percentage of change. And the blend is probably going to outweigh both of those. Yeah. Um, which is what we would say to do. Some sort of contrast or complex training would probably be chucked in there. Somewhere in the middle, Tom. I know. It's crazy, isn't it? That, that middle, ground. <laughs> middle ground that no one wants to be in because it's not extreme. Um, mm. So both groups improved the performance. However, the explosive squat and hip thrust group saw greater improvements in 30 meter sprint. And, Change of direction ability, which is an interesting one. Which that's not why I wouldn't expect that in terms of change of direction ability. But well, I imagine sh- what that'll be is that'll be something like a ten meter sprint to a cone and back. So it could be that actually they just got a bit quicker yeah. in the in there and back rather than the change of direction. Instead of like a, a T test or could an be L, something, L like that, test or something like that. Because um, because looking at hops, skips, and jumps, I think none of them are multi directional. No. So they haven't gone with any new bounds like multi, like unilateral and like side to side bounds and stuff, which which obviously would get you better at change of direction. That's the idea to use a lesson out of that bit. Um, so I've do a blend. Jesus Christ, uh, just <laughs> put them both together, mash them. Be smart about your training. Um, but it's, it's nice to see. Obviously, Brett was putting it through because obviously the hip thrust was good. Um, and it, it'd be very counterintuitive for his business not to put that up. Um, yeah. like, oh, no, you should just just be jumping around like plyometric training. Don't bother with this heavy hip thrust stuff. Um, imagine, imagine. But yeah, I think for people who yeah would say who oh, I want to jump jump higher or something like Dan wants to in basketball, it's just pick something. If you're if you're reasonably intelligent, pick something that's biomechanically similar. Yeah. And, load, and load it slightly and do it as fast and as explosively you can and as close to the movement that you're trying to do. So a squat, you load it to 50%. Or even if you were just putting like a, a weighted vest on, it's still loaded up and you were practicing jumping. That's you know, mm. a fly. So you probably recruited a hell of a lot more than when you were jumping. Um, so that's slightly maximal training. Or you can do like supra is it super maximal or like super like these they just like the eccentric loading don't they yeah. just that bit of it or... yeah so you, you can like, jump onto like a, a box so do some box jumps but you have like the load eccentric down you drop out of the squat jump and then explode up so you're heavier you are you're going down you drop the weight and then you jump up on the uh, on the old box pretty cool pretty cool um, don't land on the uh, the dumbbells though make sure you land <laughs> on the box 
yeah. That's gonna be nasty. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously the box jumps is was always a tricky situation, but there are places for drop jumps. Um, hundred percent. It also just teaches somebody the concentric phase of a jump and not the eccentric phase. They're less likely to get injured on the concentric phase of a jump. Because you think about it, Dan, that because you're landing up there, you don't actually have to jump down as well, right? Mm-hmm. Just doing concentric. That's why normally in a, a continuum, it's right at the start, and you're like, I'm going to learn to box jump, because you're just doing that half of the jump. Doesn't mean you have to like go past the grass and try and get your knees over your ears. What? Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> no? It's not how you normally land? Okay. Really? <laughs> you sure, Tom? Mm. I don't think you're doing it right. Yeah? All right. Cool. <laughs> it's madness a way of thinking that. Box jump is only concentric phase. And then depth jump, well, depth jump, drop jump, is only eccentric phase. And then both together is the most complex movement you can do. It's mental. There you or go. Or reverse it. Like depth jump out. Yeah, it's the most, pretty much everything. Okay. Crazy, mate. Plyometrics is, is amazing, isn't it, there? No, it's not. It is. But also, I wrote Mission the Point because... Uh, plyo- I, actually, I actually should probably do more, to be fair. With plyo- plyometric training is more about tendon health than anything of this. So it'll be interesting to see how, how thick their tendons were and elasticy after this. Uh, mate, can you give me a plyometric program to do so that I can just rock up to basketball one day and just dunk? And I'll be like, oh, what the 100%. hell? <laughs> That's how it works, right? If I just yeah, start doing jumps, yeah. I, get, I can dunk. You just do, right? you can dunk. You'll be like the Monstars out of Space Jam. Yeah, that's what I look like anyway. <laughs> big, the big fat one. <laughs> it's accurate, yeah. I've yeah, with a big face. In that, t- <laughs> that tank top, mate. Absolutely. That's, that's what happens after you've had a few yeah, drinks. Hey, so I've had, I've only played two games. Second pre-season, pre-season game, 22 points, eight rebounds. Top scorer on the team. Don't worry about it. Oh, wow. I want to see a double-double from you, though, mate. It's not quite a double double, unfortunately. No, that it's one. Not. No, it's not. But um, that's what I want to see. Yeah, we, we got. I think we won like seventy five forty nine or something. So I got twenty two. Seventy five forty nine. Who are you playing? <laughs> well, no, like we don't play twelve minute quarters. We play ten minute quarters, and it, it's a run through clock. It doesn't stop, so you always get like slightly lower scores. Yeah, still, but seventy five to forty nine. Yeah, we smashed them. Mate, yeah, yeah, the, clearly. Yeah, they're, <laughs> it's they're, like, they're me. You're like, they're me. Thirty thirty three percent more score than they did. Well, there you go. Jesus Christ! What were they doing? The Dan Meek effect, isn't it? They're actually, <laughs> they're actually quite a good team as well. The team Where were you playing as well? What position are you? Uh, I play like shoot, guard, guard, or <laughs> small forward. Small yeah. forward, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely small. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny Dan. Are you the smallest in the team? No. Are you not? No. Yeah, no. Oh, my no. God. <laughs> I'm like team middle. of midgets. It's crazy. But like, I'm gutted about because obviously with Paris and ho- like holiday, we haven't got a game that weekend away, but while I'm in Paris, I miss two games. I'm gutted. That's crazy. So annoying. Yeah. All right, well, you can you can buy that thing you tag me in and do some training with that. Yeah. No? Unbelievable, that, isn't it? I couldn't believe when I saw that. I was like, there's no way someone's buying that. And it's got millions of views, that video, I think. Yeah. Penalty, penalty box fit, fitness. <laughs> Great it's like, right, so describe it to people. Like, I'll, I'll describe it to you guys, right? Basically, imagine a box with like a cross in the middle that connects the sides of the box and it's basically made of like this material that is um i don't know how to describe it um yeah i don't know i'll look at the state of it (laughs) it's It's awful isn't it if you turned up to like yeah what are you doing so the outer bit of the box it's it's almost like a little bit it's like obviously a little bit firmer and it holds its place and it stands up. It's almost a bit springy. And the middle bit is just like normal fabric. But basically, yeah. you can make this box and you can pick it up at certain places. And you can make it into a hurdle or you can make it into something that you like tap your feet or hands in and out of. I like the, the, the can, fact they're just like, they do people just like just step And over it just it. looks awful. Just, like they're basically like, oh, you can take like your feet anywhere with you. And it's over just it. awful. Like, no, yeah, like the burpees over this tiny little hurdle. And like this, the whole point was you can carry it anywhere you go, and it's like no one's going to carry that with them anywhere and do fitness. No one. No, and it's ridiculous. If if you are on some concrete and you have a bit of chalk, it would the same effect. Just draw, just draw a box. On just draw chalk. Block. <laughs> just just find anything with like a line. And if you need something to jump over, just get like a big brick. Well, <laughs> yeah. like it, it's just the kind of thing that you see, and you just know it's going to be in like Barry's boot camp next week. Like they're just going to have all of them uh, all over. Be loads of them. Um, they're a NSM program provider. Ridiculous. <laughs> I'm not going to get one. No one's ever going to use one of those. 119 exercise clips. Why do they not do 120? I mean, yeah. I'm 119, no, because 119, it will literally be like left foot tap, right <laughs> foot tap. Like they've gone through everything, haven't they? To try and get, eke out every little thing. Yeah. 
jump over the box, jump in the box, oh, no, jump around. Also, <laughs> put it on the sand, put it on the beach, put it, yeah. on the, put it on your balcony, put it inside. <laughs> put it on the gym oh. court, the squash court, the golf course. Like, all oh, right, right. We've, we've run out of terrain. Um, what else can we do? Make a girl put, jump over it. Throw Make it on a pole. <laughs> throw it on something. Throw it over there. Use it as a frisbee. <laughs> Make your dog jump over it with you. You're like, yeah, yeah, great. Buy lots of them. Make a little like hurdle step and pretend mm-hmm. you're a horse. Good. That's 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 what's going to be. It's awful. Uh, I'm not really sure. Pointless piece of equipment. But yeah, two and a half minutes. No, no, no. We got two hundred and sixty thousand views. Doing pretty well. <laughs> do you, do you ship to South America? I will send you some sticks. Um, yeah, <laughs> just go to get some sticks, mate. I mean. Basically, to to make something like that, all you need to do is buy some chopsticks and put them all next to each other. Should we do a like a little Blue Peter how to? Yeah. Just, <laughs> if we, just just send it to him, be like, we've made one of these as well. Do you think we can get your uh, <laughs> under your pattern? Be fine. Awful. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to improve your speed or your agility. Um, that's going to be or more anything. Anything at all. If, if you struggle stepping over something, then find a step. And step over. <laughs> Get your friend to lay down and step over. Yeah, so, yeah. Just right, do yeah. that instead. And just ploy them to do that. It'd be the same amount of price, uh, but how much you would use it anyway. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to buy that then. I'm not going to lie. No, I didn't think no. you would. To be honest, I just. But it was quite- it, I might actually need it because I'm doing a. When you're away, you're, I've got another sort of challenge. But I'm doing a rough runner. Rough runner. A rough rudder. Rough runner. Rough, rough runner, like rough why? Runner. Why are they stealing the name of tough runner? Like why? Rough runner, um, but I'm more excited. This is 10k apparently. I'm pretty sure I just get, have to like walk and then kind of do obstacles. But there's a travel later at the end. Super excited about that. Yeah, of course you are. And the travel later. I, is, I don't think you're going to get up here first time. You don't think I'm going to get up? No, not first time. Not first time. Why not? I need just to like, judge the speed. Mm, I just think you'll. I think you'll slip. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this I is what I'm the, questioning. Well, what kind of shoes I need? Oh. Uh, go uh, as long, barefoot shoes, mate. Barefoot. Oh, sorry. I need to go get barefoot some marigolds, shoes. right? Barefoot shoes, mate. Come on, barefoot shoes. Very true. The way forward, mate. We need to. Ask, you know that. We need to ask, ask the person. Um, we we then go do a show on a, a obstacle course podcast, don't we? Oh yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shall I rate it? But yeah, we should have done that after us. I just could have got some good tips. What marigolds to buy? Be great. Marigolds. <laughs> Stick them on your feet, it'll be absolutely fine. Um, so, anyway, mate, what's going to happen to your training whilst you're away? I feel like everybody needs that advice when they're on holiday. Oh, or I'm your nutrition, it. or your training, or anything. I'm doing nothing. Like I said, I think with the way I'm feeling, I'm not even going to attempt to do it. I think I'll probably, by towards the end of the holiday, probably get a feeling for like, oh, maybe I can go do something. Yeah. Because um, I'll probably want to a little bit. And then when I'm in Paris, I don't know what facilities a gym might have or what I'd be able to do. Um, but I think, I think I will use it as a chance to just relax about it all and just really not stress. Like, um, I'll be, I'll have loads of opportunities to get my steps in when I'm in Paris and stuff like that. And I'll be eating loads of really nice food. So I don't see the point in like trying to think anything else other than that. Like I'm just very realistic. I think when I do that sort of stuff, when I go away and I basically said to myself, when I get back, I'll probably start dieting because I will have eaten too much. I know I will have eaten too much. And as well, I think if I go into it with that mindset of like, well, I'm going to diet when I come home, I'll be able to enjoy what I want. Um, so I'm, like I said, I think the trip for me is going to be an opportunity to really reset everything. I think I'm going to come back with loads of motivation to train. I'll dedicate some time to it. I'll actually stick to my training plan. Um, and I think I'll go all the way through from there till Christmas, like on a diet probably, and then I'll enjoy Christmas. That's my plan anyway. That's what I think is going to happen. Um, but obviously while I'm away, if I get the bug to train, I will obviously train. But at the same time, not putting any pressure on myself to do anything. Um, yeah, I'm just going to have fun. And um, sleep. I just, I've got like a massive sleep debt, I think, to pay back. Like, I feel like if that was a thing, I'd have like a thousand hours to pay back. <laughs> I feel like I had that just from last weekend, which I've been struggling all the way. Mm. I got a little bit sick, didn't I? And then I'm uh, fine now. And then I was paying that back throughout the week. I think I paid it back the uh, the last couple of days, actually being at home. I had a weekend actually like to myself. And I did play golf yesterday. And then I'm Friday night. But 
yeah, it was. Uh, I think I just think with, nice. with training on holiday, people just put too much um, pressure on themselves. I, I think th- if you if you're going away and you love to tra- you want to train, then train. If you go away and you don't want to train, don't train. Like I think it's it should always be something that's fun and enjoyable. And if that's something on holiday that you know you find fun and enjoyable, then do it. But if you're doing it because you feel you have to, then do not do it. I would well my advice, but um, I, I just last, think last couple of times I've been away, I haven't. No, I I don't think yeah. I I just think with us I don't think you would because I think like say you're around it so much that I just feel like if I went to the gym I'd be like thinking of something at work related. So I think, I think if it's like a a week if you're away for a week I'm like meh, it's all right I don't I don't yeah. feel like I need to ten days maybe I'll be like maybe I should squeeze one session in just to just to keep things ticking. It's like, just some movements, just some moves, yeah, some jumping, some bounding. No, I'd mm. I'd literally just go squat. That's about it. Squat and bench, run away. Deadlift and bench. Deadlift today, didn't I, Dan? Wonderfully. But that was fun. <laughs> On a Sunday, no less. Cycle to the gym. Such a health, health keynote, aren't I? It's unreal. You're such a health <laughs> It's unreal. Um, all right, any other business, Dan, before you go on holiday? Not from me. Not from you. Um, nothing from me as well. Absolutely fine. So, obviously, you haven't subscribed to Dan's new show. Uh, there is three different shows called Biceps and Banter. So give the other ones one star, and then yours, yeah. yours yeah, five that. stars. There we go. Not sabotage at all. So no, and... no way, no way. And thank, <laughs> you to, and thank you to those people who have voted, uh, who have given us a review on both that one and this one recently. Obviously, from the shout out last week, we had two people rate. I gave you a review. So Tom gave us actually a, quite a funny review as well. There you go. Good. Go and read that if you will. Yeah, go and read it. You've got to go and read that. I can tell you what it is, but it was actually very, very funny. And I, I did I did laugh when I read it. So it, I'll, okay. I'll give my hats off um, for that. And um, But yeah, no, it's it's all good. Wonderful. I was sitting there and was like, how can I troll them? Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, yeah, go subscribe to that. Subscribe, unsubscribe, subscribe again. Subscribe on all your devices if you haven't already. Um, we've actually had a, a fair few like followers on Podbean, um, which, is, which has been happening the last... Like, I'm, recently noticed i've probably recently just bothered checking it um uh, <laughs> it's probably one thing so and yeah go on spotify do that stuff are you on spotify as well are you yeah. going on it or no, it's on, on it. it's on there oh, yeah. Bam, easy it's a lot easier now uh, you easy. S- back back when we started dan you had to apply to go on spotify and they were very very specific about who who could go on there and now they're just free for all unreal any scallies are getting on as as point proved yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, that's evident. Mental. You'll be taken off soon. It'll be fine. All right. Ah, um, yeah, <laughs> all right, guys. Enjoy your holiday, Daniel, and we'll most likely catch you next week.